Hey, fourth grade art friends, it's Mrs. Herbe. I wanted to introduce you to a really cool artist. His name is Robert Indiana, and he is no longer living, but he recently died back in 2018, um, and he lived to be 89 years old. Interestingly enough, his name, um, his original, his birth name was Robert Clark. And when he was in his 30s, he decided to change his name to Robert Indiana because he thought the name Robert Clark was kind of boring. Um, he chose the last name Indiana because he was born in the state of Indiana. So that's kind of an interesting fun fact about him. Um, in the picture here in this first slide, um, it's a picture of him standing atop of a sculpture that he actually fabricated um, and that sculpture is the word love. We're going to look at his artwork and we're going to notice that um, his, his artwork, he used a lot of words and numbers and sort of simple bold images. Um, his art was associated with the pop art movement. And you might say, well, what does that mean? Um, pop art uh, was art that was sort of focusing on things that were um, popular in the culture at the time. So when kind of when his art making started to take off was in the 1960s. Um, and the painting that you see here um, it's called The American Dream, number one, and he created this painting, and it has a lot of meaning um, and symbolism in it. The numbers um, that are in this particular image right here are numbers of highways that he frequently drove on, um, or that he had driven on in his life. Um, this tilt here with the balls was um, reminiscent of a pinball machine um, that pinball machines that he had played with. Um, he had also been in the um, armed services and so you can kind of recognize sort of the stars and the, these patch like symbols sort of are reminiscent of, of military images that we see. In any case, this painting um, sort of started off his career because um, there's a museum called the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and um, they were interested in purchasing this painting from him. And after that, um, that's kind of when his artistic career took off. Um, as I said before, his work all, often features sort of just bold, simple images um, or short words and numbers. Um, and I thought it would be interesting to introduce you to him because a lot of times we don't think of using words as part of our artwork, but words can be really the focus of art just as he used um, them in his. And one of his most famous works is his love painting, which is pictured here. Um, and the inspiration for this painting actually came uh, from from a Christmas card that he designed for the same museum, the Museum of Modern Art, um, that bought his painting. Um, he designed a Christmas card for that museum in 1964. And one of the questions that might come up is where did he get his idea from this painting? What would make him think of putting um, the word love into a square and why, why did he choose the colors that he chose? Um, to give you a little bit of background, um, apparently when he was young, he went to a church um, where above the door of the church, it said, God is love. And that had made an impression on him. Um, as far as the colors go for um, the particular um, words and background of, of, of this painting, um, his dad worked at a gas station um, and apparently uh, these colors were sort of um, sort of the colors of 
the where the gas station where his dad worked. So I thought that was kind of interesting too. So he drew on um, things from his childhood um, to kind of inspire this this particular painting. Um, and then um, I came across this sort of drawing or this sketch that he did. Um, and he wrote something about it that I thought was interesting. And he said, this was part of the most dramatic arrangement, I believe. I never paint with stencils, but I design with stencils, 19th century brass stencils. And when I was playing with the stencils, this was certainly the most effective and most dynamic way to arrange them. You can't really play with the other letters the O is playable. So what he's describing is that to make um, the letters here, he used stencils. And if you guys have often uh, seen stencils, these are kind of in the same uh, sort of typeface or style of stencils. And when he's talking about how he was playing around with the layout, how um, he could, he could play, he could sort of arranged the O off to the side, but he couldn't really um, keep the design um, if he did that with any of the other letters to kind of stay within this square framework. But if he tilted the O, it could still stay within its particular square. Um, so I thought that was an interesting, you kind of see what he was thinking as he was designing his work. Um, this painting went on to even become more famous um, because the U.S. Postal Service um, put it on an eight-cent postage stamp back in 1973. Um, so this was one of this was, I think, the first love stamp that the U.S. Postal Service uh, sold. Then later on, he went on to create a sculpture from his painting. So um, I thought that was another interesting thing for you guys to understand that. Um, artists can take 2D work and then transform it into 3D work. And um, the sculpture that he created, he ended up donating to the Indianapolis Museum of Art, which is in his home state of Indiana. And in this picture, you see him standing on top of the sculpture. Interestingly enough, he also went on to create a Hebrew version of the sculpture in 1977, um, which is uh, located, the sculpture is located in Israel. And last but not least, um, he then used sort of his love um, to, uh, then he chose a different word. Uh, he chose the word hope and put it in a similar arrangement, um, but used different colors. Um, and he created this to support um, when Barack Obama was running for president of the United States. And um, he used the proceeds from this image that he used um, to help Barack Obama fund his presidential campaign, which ultimately ended up being successful. So I hope this kind of gives you guys a little bit of background and inspiration into this week's project where you are going to be choosing a word, uh, a four letter word that resonates with you and you're going to be designing the letters um, in, um, for it and we're going to be talking about how we're going to put that together.